Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Brussels commemorating the 75th anniversary of the NATO alliance. But the threat of Russia and its war in Ukraine hung over today's ceremonies. NATO leaders reiterated Moscow is as great a threat as ever, especially as U.S. aid for Ukraine has stalled. CBS News intelligence and national security reporter Olivia Gazas is following this story for us from Washington. Olivia, what significant accomplishments came out of Secretary Blinken's trip? Sure. Well, this trip was always going to be heavy on ceremony and that recognition of NATO's 75th anniversary. But the fact is that Blinken has also had to, on the ground, personally and face to face, now confront these very real concerns from his counterparts from Ukraine and other European countries about the now six month delay in this $60 billion aid package that is still stuck in Congress. Uh, we heard earlier today a very public plea from the Ukrainian foreign minister for additional air defenses as Russian airstrikes have continued to pummel that country. Uh, Blinken has at multiple points on this trip stressed the need for Congress to act, arguing that it's in the U.S.'s own interest from an economic and security standpoint to do that. But that's about all he can do is publicly message at this point. The purse strings are still with Congress and with Speaker Johnson, and all the rest for right now is rhetoric. Olivia, you mentioned air defenses. I want you to expand a little bit on that, the plan for NATO leaders to play a bigger role regarding security assistance and training for Ukraine. Sure. So these are plans that are being floated hypothetically by the secretary general and other uh, uh, members that would shift the engine of aid provision to Ukraine away from the United States and position it more squarely within the alliance in two main ways. One, by having NATO potentially take over the Ukraine contact group, which is this group of more than 50 countries that has been led to date by the defense secretary, Lloyd Austin. Uh, and secondly, to get its 32 members to commit to providing $100 billion in aid to Ukraine over the next five years. The fact that these discussions are even happening is obviously a slight to American leadership, and it's a direct result of the U.S.'s inability thus far to deliver on the aid commitments that it had made. Uh, it's also a signal of concern from NATO allies about, as we know, the potential return of Donald Trump, an established NATO skeptic, uh, to the presidency in November. It's also very hard to say whether these plans can even work, because big decisions within NATO require unanimity, and that's hard to achieve with 32 members. Mm -hmm. The alliance also doesn't have any real pressure or enforcement measures to bring to bear on its members, so we'll see if these plans gain any steam in the weeks and months ahead. Well, and I want to follow up with you on that, because at one point today, Secretary Blinken said that Ukraine will become a NATO member. Is there a timeline for that? What still needs to happen uh, for that vision to become realized? Sure. And that's been a promise that's been made by multiple NATO countries, including the U.S. to Ukraine. But it's kind of an empty promise without a clear pathway or timeline. And neither of those really exist right now. There appear to be some new discussions coming out uh, on the military side of NATO about what Ukraine will need to do in order to join. But that will only be in addition to the known sticking point so far. One is reforms targeting internal corruption within Ukraine. And two, and much more significantly, the need for the war with Russia to end before membership even becomes becomes possible. If it's ongoing, that immediately triggers Article 5. Uh, and as long as nobody can say when the war ends, nobody can really say when uh, Ukraine will be able to join NATO. All right, Olivia Gazis with that detailed update from our Washington Bureau. Thank you very much. Thank you.